Hello, welcome back to Blender Social Life. In this episode, I'm just gonna be doing some improvisation, talking, you know, about my vision, kind of like uh, this book that I probably never gonna finish. Maybe the AI gonna write the books for me in the future. I don't know. But uh, see, uh, I have I have this passion with a uh, Blender, open source, 3D, and notes, visual notes. I don't know why, but I think there's a lot of uh, a lot of values in learning visual nodes like visual programming even though you don't know programming when i first start using blender and i want to you know learn more about nodes you know like previously before i used blender i was using maya and a little bit of houdini they are of course like a powerful apps in itself it's licensed you need to pay for the apps um but i want to be able to use 3D and nodes every day on any computer, right? So Blender open source is perfect for me. In fact, the other day, the other day I was at the library and then I was doing this uh, Blender stuff and geometry nodes. I blur, I blur the photo intentionally, but it's actually at the local library. Local library have Mac. This is like iMac, older iMac. It's not maybe not Mac Pro, just iMac. But it's it is able to learn, uh, run Blender, and I can do a little bit of Python, you know, just the basic one because I'm not a coder really. But I I like doing geometry nodes, so I make something like this, you know, it's super basic. I know it's just like instancing of letter X. It's fun. It generates this random arts probably means nothing, but you can learn a lot. Uh, kind of this kind of thinking. Because I think this year, 2023, right? We, we, we have this AI stuff and the AI can actually generate arts and stuff. And it makes me wonder like, what's learning about programming and coding and nodes in the future, right? You, can, you should be able to create this using AI or you build this yourself um, using procedures because everything is gonna be like a procedures. Like if you're trying to draw a cat, for example, and every strokes can be, you know, you can make like a step-by-step -step how to draw a cat, right? As simple as that, you can also supposedly able to build visual nodes. Of course, sometimes you, out of nothing, you just have an idea, you want to create something. Of course, you build the plan how to, how to do this, right? But... Uh, I think in the future, the AI can help you to take from the simplest ideas and make it more complex with algorithm or whatever uh, it might be. So, you know, this is Microsoft Bing AI. There's also Stable Diffusion AI, Mid Journey AI. It can generate any image, right? This is Matryoshka dolls. You can specify all kind of design but it's it's being really creative and cre giving us this matryoshka dolls there's this uh, explore ideas of course you can simply prompt anything and it will it's kind of creating all these kind of random visuals ideas right and then each of these ideas can be recreated using procedural nodes Look, in theory, I mean, these robots, for example, you can use nodes to create these robots, to randomize the robots. There might be some kind of algorithm needed. A human, don't worry about that. Maybe sculpting a human is easier than using nodes. But that's, uh, we don't know yet because we can just simply prompt anything and then turn it into 3D using AI, whatever, like, you know, like, but yes, simple things like 3D typography, like letter, like 3D and making it, you know, looking kind of nice and decorative. It's, you can do that using nodes. If it's interior design, I know cup of tea, interior design, you need some kind of planning, how do you want to arrange the furniture, whatever, to make it aesthetics looking arrangement. That's another things that you can use. You can use your human brain or use AI. Okay, whatever. Um, so anyway, I think around more than 10 years ago when I, 
I want to learn coding, right? I was at at the time I actually I was kind of afraid of programming. Really, I I don't know. Um, I like doing doodles. I like drawings, and I like doing three D. But I need to learn programming. I thought so back then. I was actually looking at books by this guy, John Maeda. He's uh, he wrote a lot of books, and he in inspires me a lot i think uh his programming language designed by numbers actually it's really if you have access to these books it's amazing this is before processing before processing app you know like open source coding stuff he there's these books designed by numbers and i think that's kind of one that triggers me um i want to do this kind of visuals you know like random abstract stuff Nowadays, I can probably recreate this using geometry nodes. I think this uh, becoming kind of easy. I mean, the the easy, the basic ones like random walls, random lines like this, becoming easy thanks to geometry nodes. It gets complex, of course, and the complex part and algorithm stuff uh, is a little bit harder for me. But you can channel, you can go to YouTube channel like Erin Dales, you know. And there are many others. Uh, I cannot mention all of them, but I think some of these brains, you know, there are hundreds of them. They are really smart, younger artists and coders. Uh, they have this amazing way to think, and I think it's more advanced. For me, it's more advanced, but I, I'm pretty happy it's actually online. You can actually learn a lot from their YouTube videos. So nowadays, uh, yeah, I like still you know just dealing with the basic stuff so that's why i thought i should make a books but then the books itself kind of almost never finished um, back then because before before geometry nodes i actually use spherechalk add-ons so this is before blender has nodes i dream that blender will eventually have like node based system like houdini or maya and yeah, we eventually have geometry nodes. Geometry nodes kind of a little bit more complicated nowadays. Um, but yeah, Spherechalk is still there. Spherechalk add-on. Spherechalk add-on also gets a little bit complicated. But we have both. So this is still available for you. And then if you dig inside the issues here, there's a lot of information and knowledge that I wish. So I wish Spherechalk geometry nodes whatever nodes you know visual visual nodding can eventually uh can be we can have ai that understands about nodes like the basic stuff and then the ai can take you to intermediate and then more complex and more complex to help you whatever to to build your 3d scenes or experience or whatever you know it's a so I'm, but my brain still kind of stuck in this part, you know, the, just the basic, like generate mesh primitives, random points, curve, string. Yeah, I think the basic stuff, it's what my brain can handle. So everything that I create should be able to be created on any computer that can run Blender. So that's the idea here. So. So if we want to make something like this, we should be able to do so. I mean, if I want to teach someone about nodes, nodes should not be complicated. So in Blender, if we are using geometry nodes, anyhow, we need to okay apply the modifier and you know start just applying the modifier into these objects, and we start going inside and build something, right? We can perform operations on this cube. Any kind of any kind of mesh or geometry that we want to create, right? At the very basic, at least you need to understand there are uh, all types of geometry that you can deal with using nodes inside Blender. Okay, so that's the first thing to understand. Curve instance instances that's you know kind of related to points, but at the very basic. You can create curve, curve primitives, which is like arc, circle, star, you know, just plug and play. Super easy. That's the very basic 
but even super super easy stuff like this can go really complex very quickly so and you can build something beautiful just using the basic so mesh so curve primitive this is should be the basic okay circle star i mean star you can and then you can modify the parameters because inside the nodes itself is some kind of algorithm to create a star or a flower whatever this is okay this is a circle circle can be just and gone you know the basic stuff i thought this is super basic but still kind of powerful and of course you can do like fill curve and then extrude right you can this is something that an ai should be able to do this because it's basic the ai should understand basic really well and then build complexity together with the with our human brain so yeah okay this is simple basic and blender just decided to crash but i, I was i was really running some kind of ai generation and in, in the background but let's go to the next one okay so usually i like to work like this and just human your notes hope i'm still recording yes so mesh primitives we have cone cube cylinder grid ecosphere etc right super basics again super simple but we can do uh it's get more interesting as soon as we introduce points and random and instancing so for example we have a mass primitive grid we have cube so we have we can have grid we just made up of <coughs> multiple points right and we can turn the grids into points okay mass to points let's save this just in case it crashes random. so even like I mean random stuff random doodles using visual nodes it's kind of technical it sounds really technical but at the very basic level if you understand this this is gonna be useful for your brain instance to instance on points okay so that's starting to be you know start to look more interesting grid turn it into points instance on points easy stuff the cube itself can be randomized i believe random value vector and we need to have integer and we should be able to create multiple boxes but in this case it doesn't instance on the box itself if you are using spare chop the chop can be factorized automatically but don't worry about that anyway we can randomize this using set uh, we can use random rotations or we can also okay scale the instances first scale the instance and we can use random value there can randomize the seed and we can I believe we can use index of the particles or index of the index of the points to randomize our cube okay this is the first thing so we are basically factorizing the cube that's arranged on the grid. Okay, this is should be something that an AI able to do. An AI or human person explaining the whole stuff again and again to the student, right? But the AI should be able to build this. Give me 100 boxes of different shapes, different scale, and I think I mean this is super simple but 
I found this quite beautiful, right? Because we are building this from scratch. And if you're using Blender open source app that's running on any library or any places with a computer that's allowing you to use it, you know, even at Apple Store, you can make this tutorial. Pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. And then maybe at some point, okay, after you make, after you make uh, random boxes, you want to randomize the seed. But this is as basic as it can be with randomizations. Okay, random boxes. I think they're, uh, and then you can replace this cube with cylinder, for example. You don't have to have a cube, you can have cylinder. Cylinder, with cylinder, maybe you don't want to randomize the scale. Uh, you just want to randomize the height, but you want to have uh, you want to randomize the X and Y at the same time. So maybe let's do another scale instance. Scale instances. Can we do it this way? First, we randomize the scale of the circle. Using random value and float. This plug into the index and this goes to the scale. Okay. That seems to work. And we randomize this scale. That's a little bit more interesting and the cylinder can have less okay that's more interesting and then we can rotate instances and for each rotations i mean we do the same for the rotations index of the points plug into the id so we have different value for each so effectively it's randomized uh, factorizing the rotations now for the rotations we can use minus tau divided by 2 and tau divided by 2 here it's pi basically like yeah yeah okay this is random enough you know and we have our creations here based on the grid basic but it's really i think still kind of powerful and beautiful if you really want you can use volume box volume cube and then distribute distribute points in volume. Plug this in. Oh, we don't need mesh to points because we already have points cloud. There we go. Right? Simple. Random points. But you can also arrange it on in a grid if you want to. Just random sticks like that if you want to make it more like the x thing that i created in the library you can just scatter on the x on the letter x x curve string to curve okay gets weird for the string, we just type x, and the curve, we need to have string to curve, okay, and the uh, curve to mesh or fill hole or fill curve. And then extrude the mesh. Oh, we, we cannot really see what's going on. I should have pl uh, plugged this into the final output. So we have letter X. We can scale, fill the curve, extrude the mesh, and output it. Convert this into volume, mesh to volume. So basic stuff, just volume to points. 
once again. There you go. Distribute points in volume. I think we got that seed. And now, kind of wondering what, why my points is not scaling. String to curve, fill the curve, extrude the mesh. Mesh to volume, distribute points in volume. Hmm. I wonder why it's not instancing, but with the volume cube it's working and the grid it's working as well. There might be a bug, but in this case, it seems to be not working correctly. If I didn't use the volume, however, I have this letter X, I can distribute points in on faces. This one should work. center this middle this should be midpoint string x letter x size okay curve to mesh there we go. okay there you go curve to mesh I don't actually need to use curve to mesh because I already have these points and I just need to instance the cylinder scatter it okay this is where it gets a little bit weird I can instance the object randomly but the, the index things doesn't seem to work Okay, that's interesting. Maybe this is gonna be for the next video, how to solve this on why this doesn't work. We might need to 
we might need to use a attribute transfer or something. Capture attribute, attribute transfer. But anyhow, so that should kind of explain what, what I'm trying to say. Yeah, random points and instancing, that's the basic, I mean, even just the basic, you can have actually have 100, 108 ideas, you know, infinite ideas to generate random art. We gonna try to cover this, so I will try to continue to make the books because I don't know at least hundred pages of books, trying to explaining, to try to explain the basics that eventually the AI can just replace. I don't mind the AI replacing what I what I'm talking about here, and make it more complex and then maybe even you know you know in the end we just have like a tools. If I want to scatter this stick and draw something on top of it. I don't mind. I don't mind because even uh, like many many blender artists out there, they are also sharing and then you know sometimes selling the the assets as well and then reuse etc. So it's becoming like a code. You share it and to make a like a actual generated art artworks that's co all together combined is really just a. Uh, it's not AI making it. It's just like the peak of you know like human knowledge. Um, yeah, I don't know why the, the points doesn't work in this, in that case. I have to I have to check on this. Maybe it's a bug. I don't know. Maybe I'm using Maybe I did something that I forgot Oh, yeah, sphere chop if we use sphere chop I have to mention sphere chop because it's uh, that's where I started this all the nodes we have more than 200 nodes you can start with boxes of course box boxes arranged in a grid the way we do it we can use mess viewer this is how before geometry nodes this is how we do it if you want random vector plug random vector scatter boxes Sferchok is more dynamic and it's a bit crazier. Okay, we have random points there. We can randomize further the points. We can do similar thing using geometry nodes. Sferchok is a little bit more. It's a little bit crazier. Sometimes it seems simpler, but it's up to you. How you how you learn this random factor oops actually not random scale there random scale on on the scale of the cube for example okay we, if we have 100 points of course we need to say 100 points here all with different size the nice thing about sphere chop we can use the stethoscope and just plug in whatever data of course, you can do the same thing with geometry, geometry nodes using viewer nodes and and the attribute spreadsheet. But this is also really nice to be able to do this very quickly. So box, random, and this is the angle axis. If you want to have random scale, you can use a random vector there. But you're gonna have like a flip flip face to prevent that yes, you need to use a random vector or vector in random number so 100 Plug in there, plug in there, random seed, Let's plug in there. There are actually many ways to do this. Just want to show you. So that's random vector. If you want to have vector P field, you can do the same. Same thing. You can randomize.
yeah it's just like a point cloud basically but fact but Sphere Talk has a lot of these and it gets complicated of course of course but there's also things like script node yeah it gets really complicated something that maybe ai can handle my brain cannot handle some of your brain can handle it but at the very basics it's really if you understand mass primitives you know points in sensing and how you can manipulate the points using using math and it gets deeper using simulations etc but if you just want to handle the basic you know instancing of multiple objects that's also gonna work so all right that's pretty much it i just talk about the general stuff it's things that can be replaced using ai or you can communicate to ai to build something basic like this of course there are hundreds there are many ways to do this um, yeah just want to show you another thing so cylinder if we plug in the matrix there we get cylinder and we can bake you get multiple cylinder basic stuff right basic stuff that AI can create for you but if the AI generates the nodes you can read the nodes and understand the whole thing right and then you can make changes so that's the thing that's I guess the uh, the AI can help you to create steps procedures to you know that you can follow it's not cheating in this case it's a uh, it's just faster that way you can of course ask human artists to build this from scratch or you already have the tools and just simply use it it really depends what you want to create and in the end what's the end products and how you if it's not about profits in this case it's all about learning so learning coding learning to build this to uh, design your creation in this case just like a random art is it doesn't have much value it's generative it's it can look beautiful but you know it's basic but it's okay basic because you, you are teaching someone like you know john maida i highly respect this guy a lot my inspiration he still make youtube videos about ai nowadays so i think his brain's kind of his brain uh, works similar to mine just he's he has more experience and smarter so anyhow that's pretty much blender open source notes ai i don't know where this gonna goes i just gonna try to make a books at least i don't know if the book ever gonna be finished but maybe the ai can work my books i don't know and i maybe i should this post this on twitter you know like more sane way to share the knowledge as as a video like youtube videos like if i make one or make a couple of videos every day or maybe just one videos per day to explain the process but really the idea is ideally at this point everyone have a computer to run blender right at home or if you are at the library you can use the library computer to do these kind of things make things make experience maybe collaborate or something but you should have all the tools pretty much to do whatever you like at the library I, they even have iMovie or no they have Final Cut Pro they have Final Cut Pro with license that's amazing right you can just do video editing but I, I realized at the library the, the they limit the size maybe 10 gigabyte so you can't do too much I tried to do AI stuff it's almost worse but and this the storage ran out and I just stopped I cannot do it anymore if I have computer access at the university it's different university should have much better computer right if you work at a company the company or corporations can have much better computer powerful computer ideally it runs on a cloud of course and you can work anywhere eventually but anyhow you know that's where we're going uh, human brain and ai brains and open source apps whatever you want to create but helping you collaborate with other artists or you just work on your own art yeah that's pretty much the talk the tenth talk for today thanks again for tuning in and i'll see you next time thank you bye